Stock markets are still hurting without the constant injection of trillions of dollars streaming into them. Computer algorithms, high-frequency trading, hedge funds, derivatives, and the excessive mounting alphabet soup of trash like ninja loans have not been enough to keep the system growing. The world needs either negative interest rates globally or what was suggested at the World Economic Forum in Davos, a $100 trillion bazooka of liquidity to flood this financial system carcass. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to get into these charts which will clearly prove to you that dozens of stock markets around the world have crashed in 2015. They are down significant percentages in many cases. Let's see where this all drops off. We'll begin with this. Worst 15 global stock markets year to date. This is in US dollar terms. Look at these percentages. Look how far they've declined. If you want to see the link for yourself, go check it out. But let's look at the trend. It's moving downward. And these are from all over the world. There are no geographic similarities here. You can see how this is a global phenomenon. Let's move into something else for a moment. And I'm going to move back into that. We're looking at this. It's a very interesting article actually salient partners they're talking about this you know their sort of methods for looking at this economy and they said this the events that they're we're seeing today and these charts happen to be gold the shanghai you're looking at the 10-year bond you're looking at things from all over the world okay different things what they've said is that these events shouldn't occur together over a million years of market activity, much less in the past four years. Let me restate that. The events shouldn't occur together over a million years of market activity, but guess what? They're happening over the four years, past four years. Why? Everything's out of whack. People always ask me, you know, what is the best investment right now? Well, we can look at the fundamentals and understand that, you look, know, we need to invest in real assets. But if you look at the price of gold and silver, you know, many would argue that they should be higher. But in what terms are we measuring this? The U.S. dollar? Well, nothing makes sense about the U.S. dollar. If they admitted the amount of currency that was actually printed, the U.S. dollar would be in a you know, definitely, if not a hyperinflationary scenario, then a high inflationary scenario, but they have sort of the opposite effect. So what's going on here? Well, everything's out of whack. Everything's been hidden off the books. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Let me move on to this. U.S. stocks, and that's the red line, and the world stocks, ex-U.S. You could see a deviation that has occurred over the past few years. Look at when QE3 ended. You haven't seen the stock markets move up at all. So nothing's happened since QE3 has ended. In fact, it's a little bit worse off in some categories if you look at this. But regardless, we need another injection or negative interest rates which will have somewhat of an effect of course this will destroy either one will destroy the economy in the long term but that's not important what's important is satisfying the big banks let's move on to this here as you can see all of the different stock markets around the world that have at least 10 percent decline for the year so it's not just some of the developing nations. You're looking at big, big stock markets that are suffering at the time, at this time. So look at it for yourself if you'd like to, but this is just showing you that it's not just one, two, three, or five, or 10. It's many, many stock markets that are down significantly. In the greatest case here, we have 55%, many around the 40 range, 40% down, but of course, these are all over 10%. That is a significant number. A large decline in profit margins usually leads to or coincides with a recession. So we're looking at historically here back from 1973 up to present day. 
1985 is the only period when a 60-point decline in profit margins did not coincide with or predict a recession. So how many times do we have to see this before we figure that, okay, this is going to be the same thing that occurs over and over again cycles repeat of course there are times in history where that isn't the case but look how many times this has occurred and we have seen this happen before it's just another cycle repeating if this isn't the so-called big crash coming it's another crash coming and we have to be prepared for that let's look at this Probability of recession from multivariate regression model. All I'm trying to say with this here showing you is that they have many analysts, many computer programs that are trying to determine, okay, what's the likelihood of a crash within the next year, within the next two years, three or five years? This happens to be from JP Morgan collecting data from various sources and a, a nearly 100% chance of a recession in five years nearly a hundred percent in five years what about 75 percent within three years that's jp morgan saying there is a 75 percent chance of a recession within the next three years i tend to agree with this in fact they could kick the can down the road, but it's going to take a lot of central bank printing. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be very interesting. Of course, it will destroy the currency over the long term. But in the short term, actually, it's quite odd because it actually strengthens the currency. It's, it's all upside down right now. Nothing makes sense. Okay, what about this? Fannie Mae.com. Everyone loves Fannie Mae. Why? Because you can get housing for next to nothing. We all knew, we all seen what happened during the housing boom. People were getting homes that they shouldn't be able to afford. Financing up to 97% loan to value here. The DU is required, LTV is greater than 95%. Borrow is, borrower is not required to be a first time buyer and so on and so forth. They also said that there's limited cash out refi up to 95%. You read through here, all you get is basically, we're looking at people who would normally not be able to afford these homes. And they have things like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac there to support them. And this is, you know, I understand everyone wants to be a homeowner. This is great. But unfortunately, it didn't work out so well the previous time. So they should be more strict with where the money goes this time. But it's not the case. Let's move on to what I wrote about in my book. And in my book, I talked about Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, giving you a bit of history. In 1968, President Lyndon Johnson took Fannie Mae's debt off its books. With the rising cost of Vietnam, plus all the other government programs, Fannie, Mae, Fannie was getting too large. And this is their way of fixing the problem by fooling the public. Now, aren't we all fooled every single day when we look at the amount of debt that the US or whatever country you're in, what they project to us? Does anybody believe this stuff? Perhaps the viewers on here, the subscribers on here, I know you know what's going on, but think about the average majority. What do they think? Well, you can't know what they're thinking because their face is buried in their television, but this is just going to show you that they hide things off the book. So we don't know the truth. But my goal is to unveil that truth. Let's move on to this. Last but not least, change in U.S. civilian employment, November 2015. Native-born workers actually declining 326,000. Foreign-born workers up 375,000. So things are certainly changing in the United States. And all I wanted to note was that we need to look at the employment scenario. Things aren't getting better. Things are definitely not getting better at this time. There doesn't seem to be any change in this. And I'm simply just trying to highlight that what we are seeing isn't the real case. We need to look at the actual civilian labor force participation rate notice that it is decades low at this time if you found this video informative please give me a thumbs up i'm going to try to get as many videos out to you as possible please know that i if 
nobody else out there. I am the person who really does enjoy reading the comments, your emails. I really do reply back to as many people as I possibly can. This is YouTube. This is social media done the right way. This is how we can share information. We do videos. We do our, you know, you guys need to do your own videos as well. We need to share all of these. We need to do what we can to make a difference. Even if it's just a small difference, we need to do what we can. Don't just sit idly by. If you found this video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. If you want to flip through it, just head over to Amazon. They have this look inside feature, which allows you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.